favorite kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking favorite car, but if you want to talk about his favorite kid, that'd probably be compelling too. No. Well, I don't think he had a favorite on that. <laughs> In the heartwarming world of memories, Jeeps and a beloved dozer. Join us as we step into the life of Irene Laughlin, a story of love, legacy, and letting go. Irene shares her journey with her late husband, John, from their shared interests to the treasured moments that spanned 73 years. As Irene embarks on a new chapter, the Laughlin's cherished dozer, collection of old Jeeps and RV, finds a new purpose. A tale of resilience, memories, and moving forward. This is a glimpse into a life beautifully lived and lovingly remembered. I'm Irene Laughlin, the wife of John Laughlin, and he passed away. We were married 73 years. We had a, a good, long life together, really. I grew up on a farm north of Ellis. There were six of us. My oldest was a brother, four girls, and then my youngest was a brother. And my dad passed away when I was just seven. My mom, she was a brave lady. She, I never heard my mom ever complain about we're not going to make it or she just took it. But I always missed my dad. That was one thing I always wanted was my dad. They say I look a lot like him. <laughs> but we made it fine. My mom was brave. Irene reflects on life with four children embracing education later in life, and her deep connection to the art world, painting the canvas of her family's story. We had four children, two boys and two girls. Michael is the oldest. Actually, Mike is John Michael, but we called him Mike always, and Mike pretty much stuck with Mike. <laughs> and then Richard, he's, um, he, he always wanted to be an engineer, and he's, he, he managed that. Uh, Susan, she worked with the kids. That's her specialty. She likes the little kids and she spoils them rotten. <laughs> and Sandy, she, um, she chased her dream. She wanted to be, um, she was in dental. When the kids left home, I went back to college. Well, I graduated in 86 to get my degree from Fort Hayes. I painted all along a little bit, you know, when I had some time. And then I joined the Palco Art Club, and I still am a member with the art club. And I painted a lot on my own. Just I had a friend, Gloria Falkers. Her, she lived in Oakini. She'd come out. We'd go out and paint just out in the open. And I remember taking her down on a little road down here east of us and south this little bit. And I said, nobody ever drives down that road. And it was along the big creek. And I said, we got some great paintings we can do out there. We can paint right from the free art, you know, and from our scenery. Anyway, she always teased me about finding that road that wasn't used. <laughs> so, but we used to go paint a lot of places different, just so we could paint outside from direct scenery. I don't know. It's just a good thing to do. Explore John's passionate journey from restoring Jeeps to joy in his workshop. The Jeeps, he started out with um, the neighbor's Jeep. He had one that he moved uh, boats with around out of Cedar Bluff. And then he passed away and John bought his Jeep and restored it and then he found another one same one, I mean, like it, uh, restored it. John was very uh, dedicated on going to the shop and working. He restored all those Jeeps. He liked to be busy, and he was very good about going over there, you know, and working all day when he didn't have to. <laughs> he had to have something to do. And the shop was his second home. He'd go over there and sit, and he'd, when he got so he couldn't do much, he would uh, always sweep and clean up behind him. 
hear about John and Irene's commitment to KLICA, blending land stewardship with community support and a unique art auction tradition honoring John's legacy. So anyway, we joined uh, Lyca. He really wanted to keep our land improved. He was a big stickler on that. And so we were, uh, I think we were 57 years this last year belonging to KLICA. Anyway, Lyca is a good organization. It's all for contractors and they have a convention every year. This year I took two paintings down to the convention and uh, one brought 2200 and uh, they gave Beloit the scholarship in John's honor for the painting. You know, they like to help these young operators learn. To... It's a good organization, it really is. The contractors like it. And the dues are easy. Uh, it's all good. And John enjoyed it a bunch. So did I. And this scholarship, this painting, is um, its going to be a traveling painting. It went this year, and uh, one of the, the guys that's a member for the National also, he bought it. And so he'll keep it, and then they'll, they'll write on the back the year they have it, and then they'll bring it back to convention, and they'll resell it again next year. It, it's for the heavy duty um, operators learning. I think it's their classes for that. North Central Kansas Technical College, yeah. Heavy equipment program. I knew that, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. John's post war path transforming naval service into a thriving business with a storied dozer at its core. He came back from, he was in the tail end of World War II in the Navy. He enlisted. He didn't, he didn't get to go to his graduation because he went in before he could attend. Anyway, he came back. It was in um, probably, I would say, 49. And, and John learned how to run a crane when they were building Cedar Bluff down here and that was in 49 and 50. He was an oiler on the crane down there. And so when the guy was off, he said, you can play with it. And he learned to run the crane down there. <laughs> After that, he decided that maybe we ought to start our own business. He found that original dozer over there. He brought it home. We didn't have a shop back then. And he said, it's got potential. Our boys were six, sixth and seventh grade, and it didn't have a cab. It was kind of cold, but they managed, and he got it going, and then after about a year or so, he put a cab on it. They would work on that dozer, they had to overhaul it. He had that little pony motor on it, and he had to crank it first, and he'd get it going good, and then it'd start the big motor, and he always kept a can over the exhaust because he didn't want moisture in there, and he overhauled it. We went to Kansas City and got undercarriages for it a couple times, so we did change the undercarriages. That was probably his pride and joy. He liked that dozer the best. That's the only piece of equipment we kept forever. John was the type of person he thought he could fix anything or start his own business. He wasn't afraid to do anything like that. And, of course, I supported him. We, we did our best. The dozer is in great shape. John, he always kept it. That was his special. In fact, he wanted, he said, uh, you got to learn to run that because I'm, you, you need to bury me with that. <laughs> but that didn't happen. A heartwarming conclusion. Irene's tribute to journeys shared and the enduring love that fueled their adventures together. I helped him move equipment to new jobs. I hauled the dozer while he would rode the drag line. Man, I learned to double clutch that sucker. <laughs> Going up a hill. <laughs> we worked together quite a bit, actually. And he liked, kind of liked having me out there for some reason. I'd help him with repairs on weekends, you know. I think he was 69 when we decided to semi-retire, and that's when we bought the camper. It was a one-time owner. It was special built for these people. 
and they had the walnut paneling in, cedar line closet, ice maker, trash compactor. Actually, a blender is built in uh, the counter. It was pretty over underpowered. Him and I drove it. We took turns driving always. I remember one time driving that big hill out there by Flagstaff, coming up that big hill, and I couldn't find a place to pull over. And I could see the guy behind me, you know, just uh, chewing my hiney. <laughs> anyway, so when he went by, he gave me the finger and I threw him a kiss. <laughs> John said, what the hell, you're trying to get us killed? <laughs> He uh, decided to repower it, so he put the big motor in it. It took him a while to get it fit in there, but the highlight of his day was when we could pass all those trucks going up a hill. <laughs> so, uh, but we did enjoy it, and uh, it was a big help when he repowered it. We went to Alaska with it. We went to Old Mexico with it. We traveled east, to west. We'd end up in Death Valley for a couple weeks. We like to um, dry camp a lot with it. And so we put, John had solar put on it when we were in Death Valley at the time. And uh, we really enjoyed that too. It has a hundred gallon water tank on it so you can spend some time out there. I liked it because when I needed hot water I just had to hit a button. My hot water heater came on. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a comfy coach, e easy to drive, and we didn't really miss the slide outs. And I've never had a mouse in that, in that camper. Oh, we've always pulled the little Saturn behind us. I just hope whoever gets it can really enjoy it as much as we did. We've had it for 30 years, and so it's only had two owners. It's old, but it's nice and it's comfy. As we close this chapter, we're touched by John and Irene's journey. From family laughs to adventures in Jeeps and RVs, their life speaks of love and resilience. Thank you, Irene, for letting us into your world and choosing Purple Wave Auction to honor John's legacy. This is more than a farewell. It's a celebration of enduring love and a life beautifully lived. Here's to Irene, remembering John and the legacy that lives on.